Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered together today in fellowship with one another on the 25th of the seventh month, as we reckon it from the calendar and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And it is the 8th of October, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. We have a treat today where we're going to be going over a sermon called El's Great Name from a gentleman named Ralph Ernskine who was alive, and this was in 1730 that he wrote this, or that he preached the sermon in two discourses. I have a little bit beforehand to share, so we have some context for who he is. This is, this is from the younger brother, or the younger of two brothers, descendants of John, the youngest of 12 sons of King Kenneth of Caledonia. He was named Aaron Skeen after he killed a Roman griffin eagle, using a skein, which is a large knife. The above information and the foretelling of the two brothers can be found in the ancient history of Caledonia, page 67, which is copied below right here. And this is part of a foretelling from someone called Kadoshi or Saint MacIsaac, who actually gave up being the king of Caledonia to be a servant of our maker and an evangelist, if you will, or a preacher of the word. And at his deathbed, he gave a foretelling to his son, which was carried down in posterity. Excuse me. <clears throat> but it says, There shall arise another king in another kingdom, who shall from his lust and abominations form a religion and call it righteous. He shall deceive thousands until it is, shall be established and shall sting Caldonia three different times. But Yahuwah will yet deliver you. And this foretells the rise of Henry VIII and the founding of the Anglican Church, where we can get into that in more detail later. But if you're not familiar, he wanted to divorce his wife and marry someone else to have a male heir. And the little horn at the time would not allow that. So he decided to renounce Catholicism as the religion of Britain and make his own divorced the wife and married a new one. He he later on had her killed and married someone else, I believe. And then uh, he did have a male child, but he was sickly and died. So everything he tried to accomplish in that was, was thwarted. But what he did through, um, I believe it was the prayer of Knox, John Knox, when he was martyred, he prayed that the eyes of the king would be opened. And while he wasn't a righteous man himself, it was the beginnings of the, of the Reformation in England, where the people, not necessarily the king himself, but the people generally repented and were doing the right thing. After a time, there was a, a contention between the Anglican Church, or what they call the High Church Party, and what became known as the Puritans later on, and they eventually just left, as you know. <clears throat> but it says, This foretelling shall be proved when a woman shall arise from the dead and shall bear two sons of the true seed of King Kenneth of Fife, and they shall both be preachers of the good news. This proves that the cloud of El's wrath is passed over the assembly for a time. The foretelling was fulfilled at the births of Ralph and Ebenezer Ernskine. And if you remember, there, uh, there was an article I shared where it had the account, I believe it's at the bottom of the email, but it had the account of her coming back from the dead before she had her children. So it was actually fulfilled like that. But here we go. This is the sermon. So Ralph Ernskine from 1730. Nevertheless, he delivered them for his name's sake. Psalm 106, 8. My friends, the set-apart cup that some of you have in view is a cup of deliverance, and those that take or and those that adventure to take that cup into their hand had need to be persons duly informed and heartily concerned about deliverance. The first piece of heart exercise in all that are effectually convinced and awakened to a sense of sin and fear of wrath is that or the like question arising from the bottom of the heart, men and brethren, 
what shall I do to be delivered? Surely they are not fit for the communion table, who have never yet come this length in religion, so as to be more concerned about deliverance and the solution of this question than ever they were about any temporal concern in the world. For such as stand fair to be worthy communicants, they have come yet a greater length than this, namely, to get that question resolved to their satisfaction and their mind spiritually enlightened in the knowledge of the method of deliverance through Mashiach, so as to see upon what terms and for what reason it is that El delivers them, and particularly that there is no reason why he should deliver them unless he bring the reason from himself, that it will not be for their sake, but for his own. Eloah's great end in all his works is the esteem of his own name, and especially his work of delivering sinners through Mashiach. And that which makes it a great work is because his great name is so much concerned therein, and magnified thereby, that it is not so greatly esteemed any other way as it is here. Elohim purposes in this work that the loftiness of man shall be brought down, and Yahuwah alone exalted, and hence all whom he delivers, he humbles them so low for their sin and wickedness, as that to bring them to this acknowledgement that if he or that if ever El deliver them, it will be owing not unto them, but unto his own esteemed name. What thought and concern about deliverance you have, I know not. But if you be of these that believe, to the delivering of your inner beings, you will see so much of your own sinfulness and guiltiness before Eloah, that you will be brought to despair of deliverance in any other way, and upon any other account, that then that which ha was a method of his delivering Israel of old, quote, Nevertheless, he delivered them for his name's sake. Unquote. How this people sinned, we are told in the two preceding verses, and how Elohim delivered them, we are told here in the text. Nevertheless, he delivered them for his name's sake. The more full history of their sinning, even in the extremity of danger they were in, and of Elohim's delivering them at the Reed Sea, you have Exodus 14 throughout. And concerning this wonderful deliverance, there are four things you may notice in the words. <clears throat> One, we have an esteemed deliverer in the pronoun he, namely Yahuwah, the great El, our deliverer Yahushua Mashiach, the messenger of the covenant that appeared to Moshe in the bush and delivered Yisrael by the hand of Moshe. He is the deliverer, even he that says, Look unto me, and be delivered, all you ends of the earth, for I am El, and there is none else. 2. The grievous sinners whom he delivered, in the word, them, he delivered them, namely, the Yisrael, his professing people when they were in great peril, having the reed sea before them, the rude enemy behind them, and inaccessible mountains on each side of them, in the greatest extremity, and yet a sinful people, sinning against El even in that extremity, yet he delivered them. 3. The great argument that moved him to deliver them or upon what account he thus appeared, it was for his name's sake, that is, for his own sake, as Hezkiyahu prays to be delivered from Sennacherib in Yeshiyahu 37.20, quote, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are Yahuwah, even you only, unquote, or for your name's sake, 
that is for your esteem's sake. Psalm 79, 9. Help us, Eloah, of our deliverance, for the esteem of your name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Unquote. That is, also for your loving kindness sake, for your goodness sake, or because they are called by his name. This is urged, Yeremiah 14.9, quote, You, Yahuwah, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name, leave us not, unquote. Number four. The marvelous nature and circumstance of this deliverance in the word, nevertheless, the esteem of Elohim's loving kindness is herein magnified, that he delivered them for his name's sake, with a non-obstinate, with a nevertheless, that is, notwithstanding all their sin, though their cry or their sin cried to El, not to deliver them, but to damn them, not to help them, but to destroy them. Nevertheless, he delivered them for his name's sake, notwithstanding their provocations. Observe that when El delivers sinners, or a sinful people, he does it for his name's sake, notwithstanding their provocation whereby they forfeit his help and deserve destruction. I shall first premise some general positions for clearing the text and doctrine. Secondly, illustrate the truth of the doctrine from some parallel texts of scripture. <clears throat> First, I shall premise some general positions for clearing the text and doctrine. First position, that the deliverance and temporal rescue that El, for his name's sake, wrought for Yisrael of old, in bringing them out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, through the Reed Sea to Canaan, was typical of the great deliverance from sin and wrath to eternal life through Yahushua Mashiach, which spiritual and eternal deliverance this text itself leads me to speak of, not excluding the temporal deliverance, remarkable appearances of Elohim's providence, for the visible assembly in general. As Yisrael's sin and provocation, and the judgments that came on them for the same, was our example and warning piece. 1 Corinthians 10.6, and great destructions happened for examples and types, verse 11, quote, and are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come, unquote. So the great deliverance that El wrought for them were types of the great deliverance that El works for sinners through Yahushua Mashiach to the praise of his, the esteem of his loving kindness or for his name's sake. Second position. Many unconverted persons in the visible assembly may be delivered from temporal judgments and delivered of Elohim only in outward respects, and that for his name's sake. So doubtless many unconverted persons were among the Yisraeli. Yea, most of them gave discoveries that they were so. They forfeited his help in many respects, yet he delivered them in many respects for his name's sake. See Yehezkiel or Ezekiel 36, 22, 23, quote, Thus said Yahuwah, I do not this for your sakes, house of Yisrael, but for my Kodesh name's sake, not for your sakes, do I this, says Yahuwah Elohim. Be it known unto you, unquote. Their slavery was so great that it opened the mouth of the heathen, as if the El of Yisrael were no mighty one. Therefore, Elohim, for his name's sake, helped them. See also Deuteronomy 9.5. Yisrael was bad enough, but the heathen were no better, but rather worse. Therefore, for his name's sake, he appeared. 
many whom El will not be merciful to in the world, may yet for his name's sake be delivered in time. Third position. Favorable inner beings do too much forfeit Elohim's help in time of danger and deserve to be forsaken of El and exposed to misery. Yet for his name's sake he delivered them. This is their acknowledgment, as you see in Yaakov, Genesis 32.10, quote, I am not worthy of the least of all your loving kindnesses, unquote. Even so does the assembly acknowledge, as Renine 8.13 and Lamentations 3.22, quote, it is of Yahuwah's loving kindness, or chesed, that we are not consumed, unquote. And again, fourth position. El may punish his people dolefully, whom yet for his name's sake he will not destroy, as in these instances just now recited. See Yirmiyahu 30.10. Elohim may punish his people for their sins severely, whom yet he will deliver eternally for his name's sake. And again, you remember, he says he by no means leaves inequity unpunished. So he'll correct you for the things he must in his life if you're going to be eternally delivered, right? Yea, and punish them more than others. Amos 4, 6 through 13 and 3, 2. Quote, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your inequities. Unquote. Those whom for his name's sake he delivered from sin to eternity, he will make them feel it to be an evil and bitter thing in time. Fifth position is, El may deliver a visible assembly in many outward respects for the sake of his name, which he resolves to magnify, especially in behalf of his invisible remnant among them. His hidden ones, Yes, Yahu one ten, except Yahuwah of hosts had left us or left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been made or been like unto Gomorrah. Unquote. Many are delivered with a temporal deliverance for the sake of those whom El resolves for His name's sake to deliver with eternal deliverance. Hence, it is said with respect to the day of outward calamity that for the sake of or for el the yeah for the elect's sake these days shall be shortened i'm sorry about that the wicked are more obliged to elohim's people than they are aware of just a moment sorry about that i i would like to mention something real quick it is a theme that you can see in Bereshit or Genesis when Yahushua Mashiach appears to Abraham as Yahuwah and he bows before him when he sees the three men. He asks to, to he washes their feet and feeds them. And then he has the the discourse with them where he makes known to him what he's going to do, the judgment that's coming upon Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities of the plain there. And through their discourse with one another, Abraham petitions, and he gets our Mashiach to give his word that if there are ten righteous within the city, it will be preserved for their sake. And that is a theme that you can find elsewhere in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in Second Baruch in particular, where that is still true, and it's true for outside of the land and in it. So if you really love your city, if you really love the people in it, if you care about their well-being until he comes, the best thing to do is to find like-minded believers and fellowship with them and pray for the benefit of that city. Because as it mentions in 2 Baruch, the prayers of the righteous are like a strong wall and defense against anything happening. So sixth position is that that deliverance wherein El's name is most concerned 
is deliverance in Mashiach Yahushua unto or to eternal life, wherein he brings sinners from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto Eloah, from death to life, from a hell of sin and misery to a Shamayim of set apartness and happiness. Having proposed these things shortly for clearing the text and doctrine in the general, before I proceed to the particular parts thereof, I shall, secondly, prove the doctrine by scripture instances. And these are things that anyone can take their own time and study to look these up to see how they relate, all right? Which I highly encourage you to do. But Yehezkiel or Ezekiel 28 and 9. Read 1 Samuel 12, 22. Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 48, 22, 25. Consider for this purpose Elohim's promises, such as Yeshiyahu 48, 8, 9, and 11. His people's prayers, such as Yeremiahu 14, 7. But an induction of particulars to this purpose may afterwards occur for the confirmation, meaning he's going to quote scriptures as he goes along to prove each point in particular, okay? Now, having promised some things and confirmed the doctrine, the method may be as follows. One, to inquire what is that name of El, for the sake of which he delivers. Two, what it is for El to deliver for his name's sake. Three, what deliverance he works for his name's sake. Four, what is imported in this nevertheless, or in El saying with a notwithstanding, and so over what impediments, real provocations, and seeming impossibility, he brings about this deliverance for his name's sake. Five, offer some reasons why he thus delivers for his name's sake. Six, deduce some inferences from the whole for the application, meaning finding ways to use it in your life, okay, which is the best part for us. <clears throat> One, I am to inquire what is the name of El for the sake of which he delivers. And, one, by the name of El, we may comprehend his being, El himself, Deuteronomy 28, 58, quote, that thou mayest fear this esteemed and dreadful name, Yahuwah thy Elohim, unquote. Our Yahuwah Yahushua commands his emissaries to go and teach or discipline all nations, immersing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the set-apart Ruach, Matit Yahu, or Matthew 28, 19. By the name of El, then, is meant El himself, and to deliver for his name's sake, is to deliver for his own sake, as he says, Yeshayahu 43, 20, quote, I, even I, am he that blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Unquote. We find the names of things taken for the things themselves, quote, a few names in Sardis, unquote, that is, a few persons. Two, by the name of El, we may comprehend the authority of El, that is, his absolute right and power to do what he pleases with his own creatures. He has the right to order and power to execute whatsoever he will concerning them. Quote, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Unquote. Yeshiyahu 66.10 So that when he delivers for his name's sake, he delivers for the sake of his sovereign will and pleasure and for manifesting his own absol absolute authority his right and might to effectuate what he pleases. 3. By the name of El we may comprehend the Mashiach of El, for in our Yahuwah Yahushua Mashiach is the whole name and authority of El. 
Exodus 23, 21. Quote, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Unquote. Yet in case any should think, this is not a part of El's name that indeed he does part in inequity, transgression, and sin. Why then is it said of Mashiach, quote, he will not part in your inequity, for my name is in him, unquote. I answer, the pardon here is not a pardon that respects condemnation and freedom from hell, but castigation, as a father is said to pardon a child when he will not spare the rod, nor forbear to chasten. Thus he will not pardon your inequity without taking vengeance on your inventions, quote, for my name is in him, unquote, i.e., my authority is in him. And an excellent example of this very thing you can see in the book of Shafotim, or Judges, chapter 2, where the, the Melech Yahuwah, or the messenger Yahuwah, appears to the children at Bochim and rebukes them for not doing what he said. And he mentions that it's the covenant he made for them, and therefore he will not deliver their enemies to them, and they're going to be a snare for them. So he punished them for the, their inequity. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that he wouldn't forgive them. It's that very picture in actuality. And you can see that over and over again, even in the example of Dawid's life after he committed the inequity with the adultery with Bathsheba or Bathshua. I'm sorry, that was uh, Yahuda's wife. But um, he was forgiven when he prayed and repented of it. However, he was not left unpunished. His word, the things he feared came upon him. His own words were a snare to him. Right, he became his own judge. With if you're not familiar, we'll go over the account when we get to it. But a foreteller came to him, gave him a parable, and the judgment he gave against that man in the parable was what happened to him in a very literal sense. And he also had the the curse of the sword not leaving his house as a perpetual thing throughout history for his children, which you can see through. Uh, throughout time, especially with the Parthian Empire and the Asarxid dynasty. The Asarxid dynasty were the sons of Dawid. You have the uh, the War of the Roses in Europe and other things like that, where monarchs were killing each other, and these are all family. These are all children of Yahuda, sons of Dawid, eventually. And it, literally, the curse not being lifted from them, the sword not leaving them, while they're not believers in our Mashiach. But when the truth came... And when I believe it was Toma was given to preach to the Parthians, but when they repented, at the time when the monarchy even repented, that slaying of their kin ceased for the entire time they were believers. Eventually they went apostate again and lost their kingdom. But that's a story for a different time. <clears throat> this is Mashiach is the very name of El. And when he pardons for his name's sake, he pardons for his Mashiach's sake. Thus the Old Testament Kodeshim, as they used to pray to be delivered of El for his name's sake. So they sometimes pray for his word's sake. Second Shemuel 7.21 That is for Mashiach's sake, the word that was made flesh. For the same prayer is rendered, quote, for thy servant's sake, unquote. First Chronicles 17, 19. See also Psalm 40 or 84, 9 for this purpose. Dawid's prayer is, quote, Behold El, our shield, look upon the face of thine Mashiach, unquote. And Daniel's prayer is, quote, For Yahuwah's sake, unquote. Daniel 9, 17. And, quote, but El has done much and will do much for Mashiach, because his name is in him, and in him he is well pleased and reconciled. Or, by the name of El we are to comprehend the attributes of El. I shall mention some of these. 
One, his power is his name, and for the sake of that he delivers, as in the text, quote, he delivered them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power known, unquote. Compare Shemot or Exodus 19.16 and Romans 9.17. For this cause El raised up Pharaoh, that he might show his mighty power in him, that his name might be declared throughout all the earth, even his mighty power in delivering of Yisrael out of his hand. This argument Moshe makes use of to divert El's threatened wrath, Numbers 14, 15, and 16. This is the name El manifest to Abraham, Bereshit or Genesis 17, 1. Quote, I am El Shaddai, walk before me and be you perfect, unquote. And the three children, Dan, or Daniel 3.17, have recourse to his name. Quote, our El whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us, unquote. If there be anything that stands in the way of the accomplishment of his promises, he is able to remove it. So Abraham's belief fixed here, Romans 4.21, quote, being thus persuaded that he that had promised was also able to perform, or was able also to perform, unquote. When El delivers for his name's sake, it is for the sake of his power to show that he is able to do above all that we are able to ask or think that he is able to do above our wants, above our deserts, above our prayers, and above our thoughts. We cannot want more than he can give. He, we cannot pray for so much as he can bestow. We are not able to think what he can do. And no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and it has not come into the thought of man what Elohim has prepared for them who love him. Right? <clears throat> His comprehension is immeasurable and without limit. El's power is a part of his name that Amuna or belief may take hold of for deliverance and flee unto, even when there is no explicit view of his will. Thus said the leper, quote, If you will, you can make me clean. Unquote. I cannot tell if you will help me, a inner being may say, but I know he is able, and I am called to trust in his powerful name and to take hold of his strength. Yeshiyahu 26, 24, chapters 27, 5. While you can do no better, it is good to trust in his power and put his will in his own discretion and refer that to himself, that an inner being is not far behind, or that inner being is not far behind. 2. His loving kindness is another part of his name. When he delivers for his name's sake, he delivers for his loving kindness' sake. Quote, Who is an L like unto thee? that pardoneth inequity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in loving kindness." Unquote. Micah 7.18 He is El Yahuwah, Yahuwah merciful and favorable. Exodus 23.6 He so far delights in mercy, that mercy or loving kindness rejoices over judgment. Yaakov 2.13 And another way to put that is where it mentions love covers all transgressions, right? He who loves much is forgiven much. Hence the psalmist's prayer is, Psalm 6.4, quote, Return, Yahuwah, deliver my inner being, for your loving kindness sake, unquote. And Psalm 79, 8, quote, Remember not against us former inequities, 
Let your tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low, unquote. And verse 9, quote, Help El of our deliverance, for the esteem of your name. Deliver us and purge away our sins for your name's sake, unquote. Dawid had fainted unless he had believed to see the goodness or tovim of Yahuwah. Psalm 27, 13. Out of a sense of misery, we ought to go to the fountain of loving kindness and so look to be delivered for his name's sake. 3. His hokma or wisdom, is another part of his name. Quote, Yahuwah is an El of knowledge. By him actions are weighed, unquote. 1 Shemuel 2.3 Yea, quote, his comprehension is infinite, unquote. The psalmist takes up the Hokma of El as his name, and for the sake thereof seeks to be led and guided. Quote, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me, unquote. Psalm 31.3 El, in delivering sinners through Mashiach, has such a regard to his name as an El of infinite Hokmah, that in this method of deliverance the manyfold Hokmah of Elohim is shown. Ephesians 3.10 4. His truth, and if you're not familiar, I'll remind you again, Hokmah is the Hebrew word for wisdom. It literally is to be able to taste and see what's good for you. Hulk is the palate. It's the roof of your mouth. And it's also, literally, it means for a mother to chew up dates and stick it to the roof of a baby's mouth for them to be able to be weaned off milk and to taste what good food. Okay? And hulk ma, the ma is what in Hebrew. So hulk ma is what is, what is good for you. The the good things that you taste and eat. And that's what wisdom is from above. It teaches you what is, you know, good or not, what things to do and what things to abstain from. Number four, his truth and steadfast fidelity, amuna or belief, is another part of his name for the sake of which he delivers and shows loving kindness. Amuna is the word, it means faith, it means steadfast fidelity, trustworthiness, it's belief and, it's trust and trustworthiness, it's faith and faithfulness, all right? It is the doing of the thing. That That's the essence of Amuna. It also is very, it's related to the word Amen, which is so be it, right? But he says, his truth and steadfast fidelity, or Amuna, is another part of his name, for the sake of which he delivers and shows loving kindness. Quote, his chesedim are new every morning. Great is your trustworthiness. Unquote. Lamentations 3.3. 3. Psalm 145, the missing noon. It's missing from the Masoretic text, but it's in the Samaritan Pentateuch. Excuse me. It's in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it said, Yahuwah is trustworthy in all his words and shows loving kindness in all his deeds. This is what was quoted by, um, I believe it was Kepha in the Apostolic Constitutions. And a lot of the times where they do direct quotes of things and tie it directly to our Mashiach, those very places were what were tampered with later on and in what we call the Masoretic text, which is why you'll see discrepancies when you read the quotes in the Renewed Covenant, and then you read the Psalms. If you go to the KJV and you go back to the, the original covenant writings, the Psalms won't always say the same thing. Uh, in particular, one of the worst egregious ones is Psalm 22, where they change it instead of piercing my hands and feet, they have it as a lion at my hands and feet. And again, these are foreshadows of things that would come later on, but it was a type to teach us. So it says right here, getting back on track, it is declared to be one of the capital letters of his name, Shemot or Exodus 3462. 
quote, abundant in goodness and truth, unquote. And hence, and that word truth is amuna, okay? And hence, how often did El remember toward Yisrael his promise to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, notwithstanding their sin? Read Psalm 105, 8, 97, 10, 2 Kings 13, 23. And what will not El do for his truth's sake, for his promise's sake? For, quote, he is not a man that he should lie, unquote. He that for his mercy's sake makes the promise will for his truth's sake accomplish it. Quote, thou wilt perform the truth to Yaakov and loving kindness to Abraham, which thou hast sworn unto our fathers, from the days of old, unquote. Micah 7.20 In delivering sinners through Mashiach, his truth is exceedingly manifested. His truth in fulfilling the threatening of the law upon the surety in the room of the sinner. His truth in fulfilling the promises of the good news that are all yea and amen in Mashiach. His truth and trustworthy or steadfast fidelity in fulfilling the promises made to Mashiach in the eternal compact, which may be part of the meaning of that word, Romans 3.25, quote, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin through that propitiation, when Elohim forgives sins through his blood, he declares his righteousness and steadfast fidelity in his promise made to Mashiach with reference to his seeing his seed upon his giving his inner being, nefesh or soul, an offering for sin. Yeshiyahu 53.10 And this very thing, the, uh, the idea that what he suffered he was made perfect through sufferings mentioned in the book of Hebrews or Avrit, uh, Avrit, right? And it's also the theme of what is in Gad the Seer chapter 1, where he, the father, explains that because of the impurity mixed with the purity, all these things happened to him. But because he stood as the shepherd all the days he was in, in the sun, and he did not deviate from it, all these things would come upon him, meaning the the he would be going into the lower parts of the earth and then lifted up high above all the shemayim to be above all and fill all as it is written number five his right ruling is another part of his name for the sake of which he delivers and works deliverance the right ruling of l may be viewed as either retributive or vindictive Retributive right ruling is that for the sake of which he delivers either more generally or in a more special way. In a general way, even some wicked sinners in the visible assembly may be unjustly oppressed by their enemies that are more wicked than they, as Yisrael was by the Egyptians. Therefore, Elohim righteously took vengeance on them and delivered Yisrael. And he did the same thing to the Assyrians. He did the same things to Elam, the Elamites and the five kingdoms that rose up and, and persecuted the people. They inadvertently afflicted Abraham, his chosen. And they were wiped out when he, when he went to go rescue his, his uh, nephew there, if you remember. This is, in a special way, it may be viewed in the Kodeshim themselves. Sorry, but the same thing happened to Elam, the same thing happened to the Assyrians, the same thing happened to Babylon, the Medes and Persians that rose up and fought against them that when they weren't doing the evil comparatively, they they were defended. Darius, the, the Persian, was completely, he was killed when he fought against Tamaris and the uh, Masigate when they weren't when they weren't doing him any harm or instigating evil, right? You have the examples of pagan Babylon or pagan Rome being taken out by them 
at the fall of that when it happened in the same way, just like Babylon did. So these things happen again and again in the way that he showed the patterns that he said and in the way that he said, because he told us that he was going to use his children as his battle axe and sledgehammer to, to do these things to the nations, which has been going on since that time, even to today. But in a special way, it may be viewed in the Kodashim themselves, who are sinners yet because objects of promised mercy in Mashiach Yahushua, as therefore he rescues and delivers for his righteousness and right ruling sake. Quote, quicken me, Yahuwah, for your name's sake, for your righteousness sake, bring my inner being out of trouble. Unquote. Psalm 143.11 Thus he is said to uphold his people with the right hand of his righteousness. Yeshayahu 41.10 His vindictive right ruling is also that for the sake whereof he delivers, upon the supposition of its having got full satisfaction. And so we ordinarily comprehend Romans 3.25, quote, whom Elohim has set forth to be a propitiation through belief in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Elohim, unquote. It is ordinary for people to seek to be delivered for his mercy's sake, but believing views of right ruling satisfied and Elohim reconciled in Mashiach would make the inner being as freely and boldly seek to be delivered for right ruling sake in and through Mashiach the Atonement, in whom that name of El, right ruling, has more esteemed satisfaction than ever it will have in the damnation of sinners. This is expressly Elohim's name, Shemot or Exodus 34.7, quote, in keeping loving kindness for thousands, forgiving inequity, transgression, and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, unquote. That is, in dispensing loving kindness, he will be so far from dispensing with right ruling, that by no means will he show mercy in pardoning sin to the sinner, without the highest respect to right ruling, in punishing sin in the surety in whom his vindictive right ruling, taking vengeance on sin, is so cleared and vindicated that when he pardons sin through Mashiach, he is as righteous in pardoning sin as he is merciful in doing so. For he has so ordained it to the esteem of his great name, quote, that he might be righteous and the declarer right of them that believe in Yahushua. Unquote. And this is explained throughout with, by Shaul in other ways, in various means as well, where he says, he, and especially to the Galatians, where he talks about how Mashiach became a curse for us. And the reason why it was necessary is that all men have sinned and fallen short of the esteem of Elohim. There is no one righteous, no, not one. And everyone has done what deserves death. So we need the Redeemer. And it's through him who became a curse for us, because cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree, that we are able to be freed from the curse for not being obedient to every word of the Torah to do it. Okay? These are all things that we have to believe and so be delivered from the wrath to come. And that's the work that he did and when he, when he came. It's the whole thing about his name and deliverance. Number six. His set-apartness, Kodeshah, is a part of his name, for the sake of which he delivers. This is declared to be his name, Shemot or Exodus 15.11, quote, Who is like unto thee, esteemed in Kodeshah, or set-apartness, unquote. Yeshiyahu 57.15, quote, The high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is Kadosh, or set-apart. Unquote. For the sake of this, he pities and delivers Yehezkiel or Ezekiel thirty six twenty one. 
But I had pity for my set-apart name's sake, which the house of Yisrael had profaned among the nations. Unquote. Hence read verse 22, quote, I do not this for your sake, but for mine set-apart name's sake. Unquote. Elohim, in delivering sinners through Mashiach's righteousness, has his set-apartness in the precept of the law, as much magnified by the active obedience of Mashiach as his right ruling in the threatening of the law is magnified by his passive obedience. I might here mention the providence of El as a part of his name, his watchful care over his people, quote, for the eyes of Yahuwah run to and fro to show himself strong in their behalf, unquote. 2 Chronicles 16.9 He rules and overrules all for their good. And another one, all things work to the good of those who love Elohim, to those who are called according to purpose. Right? I might mention his titles whereby he is designed, such as, quote, Yahuwah of hosts, the mighty El, the king of kings, unquote. I might likewise notice his word, which he is said to magnify above or yoked to all his name. But in a word, as the name is that by which anything or man is known, so the name of El is the very thing whereby he makes himself known, whether it be in his titles, attributes, ordinances, words, or works. He has made himself known by his works of creation and providence, but a thousand times more clearly in the work of redemption and deliverance. Herein appear not only those attributes that shine in creation and providence, but also some perfection of Elohim's nature that would not have been displayed in case the first covenant had stood, such as the infinite mercy and patience of El towards guilty sinners nor such a pitch of condensation that, as he has here discovered, condescension, meaning he condescended himself, he came down and made less of himself for our benefit, speaking of our Mashiach. And it mentions that he was made a little less than Elohim or than the messengers in scripture, right? In that he suffered death. This is nay, nor any other attribute had shined forth in such luster and beauty as here it doth. Therefore, while Satan thought to have deleted the name of El, that he wrote upon the creature at first, behold how infinite wisdom counteracts him and makes that the occasion of making his name more known than before. These attributes of El that are displayed in the new covenant of favor and exerted in the deliverance of sinners according to that covenant, is that name of El that is principally here to be considered. All right, just a moment. Number two. The second thing was to show what it is for El to deliver for his name's sake, or for the sake of his name, Having cleared what is his name, or what his name is, rather, what is it, I say, for El to deliver for his name's sake? In general, besides what has been said, Elohim's delivering for his name's sake imports, I think, his making his name the all of our deliverance. Because the sinful creature is nothing, has nothing, will do nothing, can do nothing in the affair of his own deliverance. Therefore, El himself will be all and do all. Yeshayahu 59.16 and Yeshayahu 63.5. Quote, he looked and there was none to help. Therefore, his own arm brought deliverance, unquote. And on a side note here, in Sirach, Ben Yahushua, 
also called Ecclesiasticus. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, in the Community Rule, in the Book of Yahukanon, from the Hebrew version that was released, the the leaflets that were released from the Vatican, that they uh, they had a reason for doing that. But in the Hebrew text that they have of the Book of Yahukanon there, and in the Recognitions of Clement, there's a title Hakol or the All is used for our Creator. So it's rather fitting here that he is the all of our deliverance right here. His a, a literal title is Hakol, or the all in Hebrew for him. So that is another one. Thus El designed to show himself to be all in all more particularly. One, for Elohim to deliver for his name's sake is to make his name the motive whence he delivers. What moved him to deliver any guilty sinner? It is his name. His own unmerited loving kindness or chesed moved him. His own favor moved him. His own bowels of pity and compassion moved him. His own love moved him. His own name moved him. Quote, Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, unquote. Could I comment there, Richard? Certainly. Uh, if, I, if I'm following correctly, there is nothing we can do on our own behalf. And he is doing it all because of who and what he is. His name implies certain actions his love is what defines him but it also if we receive him and we receive his love then we become ambassadors in his name acting as he would act we don't love people because they loved us we we have to love them because he loves them absolutely that reminds me of the scripture. Um, it says, we, we, as envoys of Elohim, we beg you, therefore, on behalf of Mashiach, be reconciled to Elohim, right? And that... So they, I don't have to try to love them. You know, it's just, I don't have to look for something good in them, although I may, but I, I love them when I'm filled with his love. I can do nothing else. Yes, the love of Mashiach compels you to do these things. Exactly so. And that's why he says, become imitators of me as I imitate Mashiach, right? And you look at how Shaul actually was. He, he was um, he was specifically foretold in his patriarch, Benjamin. It's in the Testament of Benjamin, they call it. But the Testament of Benjamin has a foretelling of the his people being like the raving wolf and then later on Shaul coming and being a minister of the good news as a special emissary for our Mashiach. And that's also specifically mentioned by taught ones after his time. Oh, I want to remember who it is correctly. Give me one moment. Irenaeus had a taught one. I, I, it starts with an H. I'm not going to say it right because I keep thinking Herodotus, but Herodotus was a Roman historian from 500 BC. So different individual. But the taught one of Arrhenius, who was the taught one of Polycarp, who was a taught one of Yahukanon, and Polycarp and Ignatius were both contemporaries and taught ones of Yahukanon, right? Both of them became overseers of assemblies they knew each other. They wrote letters to each other. Ignatius was a martyr beforehand. And then Polycarp was also a martyr. But, excuse me. Um, point, uh, I forgot what I was talking about there. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. I hit my knee and it, it hurt because I have I got bit by a dog not too long ago. My dog, but I'm okay now. And I forgot what I was saying. However, we had a little bit of a chat while I was uh, paused. And my brother Earl had a great comment. 
And now our brother Paul has some scriptures that he wants to share that's in relation to what we've been talking about. So without further ado, please go ahead, brother. Yeah, it's a uh, psalm. I read this during the week and it kind of hit me because uh, I was going through the, you know, I wasn't hitting as the feast as I should and, and whatnot. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, punishment as opposed to lack of rewards. And I was reading Psalm 18 as what David, Dawid was saying, uh, let's see, Psalm 18 verses 18 through 24. Or, or yeah, 24. He goes, um, they confronted me in the day of my calamity, but Yahuwah was my support. And he brought me out into a large place. He delivered me for, he delighted in my righteousness. Yahuwah rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanliness of my hands, he repaid me. For I have guarded the ways of Yahuwah and I have not acted wickedly against my Elohim. For all his right rulings are before me and I did not turn from his laws. And I am perfect, I am perfect before him. And I guard myself for my wickedness. And Yahuwah repays me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands before his eyes. So I felt like the, if, if, when I'm walking and being obedient, if I miss it if I, if, or if I'm not doing it right, he's not there to punish me. He just can't reward me to the fullness of that he wants to. So that's what I got out of that. And I think that kind of goes along with what you were saying. And um, Earl was talking about earlier. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's uh, that's what I got out of what we were talking about today in the, for the last 20 minutes. As nobody's commenting, I think it's important to remember how, to me at least, how precious it is to have this time, no matter what we're studying. When I've got people all over the world, it seems, that uh, have a similar attitude that I have and that I can share with them, even though they may not be my neighbor, uh, it's it's comforting to know you're out there. It's very comforting. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I, I had been speaking in response to him, but it was muted the whole time. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I was saying that absolutely does go in line with what we were sharing. And um, later on, as we go through the beginning, the renewed, uh, the original covenant writings, especially when Moshe was reiterating all that happened to them through the wilderness journey in the book of Devarim or Deuteronomy, you'll see the benefits of what it means to, to, to be obedient and do his will. And it's just having creation function the way it's supposed to. And then when you're contrary to it, that's when there's issue. And it's very interesting when you look at that. It's mentioned in the Psalms. He, he directly talks about it right there. There's a few other places that talks about that. And um, that's part of what looking over his works and his providence in creation, the things that he does for his people and why it's all it, to help teach us, to train us to do the things that are pleasing for him, right? Because it is absolutely best for men in creation to, to love their maker and to love their neighbor. Uh, real quick, we can get a little bit further here and before we stop, though. This is uh, point number two, number two for the second one, right? For Elohim to deliver for his name's sake is to make his name the reason why he delivers through, or though his name be the motive, yet some may think there is surely some reason drawn from the creature. Armenians say, that it was the foresight of steadfast fidelity and good works, that he foresaw some would be better than others, and improve the means better, 
and for this reason he would deliver them. But the word of El says otherwise. Debarim or Deuteronomy 7, 7, 8. Elohim loves sinners because he loves them. His sovereign chesed, or loving kindness, is the cause of his showing loving kindness. Quote, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Unquote. Romans 9.15, which was quoting Exodus 33.19. 3. To deliver for his name's sake is to make his name the matter of their deliverance, inasmuch as his name itself is their deliverance. His name is their strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 His name, the eternal Eloah himself, is their refuge. Debarim or Deuteronomy 33.27 Insomuch that whom he delivers, they have not only deliverance from him, but in him. Quote, Yisrael shall, Yisrael shall be delivered in Yahuwah with an everlasting deliverance. Unquote. Yeshayahu 45.17 Mashiach, therefore, who calls us to look to him and be delivered, he himself is the deliverance of the sinner. Quote, now mine eyes have seen thy deliverance, unquote, said old Shimon, Luke 2.22. And that's also part of the nightly prayer from the Apostolic Constitutions. For mine eyes have seen your deliverance, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to the revealing of the nations and the esteem of your people, Yisrael, right? Quote, Behold, your deliverance comes, unquote, says Elohim, Yeshiyahu, or Isaiah 62, 11. Mashiach is not only the helper, but the help itself. Quote, Yisrael, you have destroyed yourself, but in me is your help, unquote. That's Hosea 13, 9. See Psalm 18, 2, quote, Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my El, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my deliverance, my high tower, unquote. He is given for a covenant of the people, a light to the Gentiles, unquote. Yes, Yahu 49, 6, 7. Again, number four. To deliver for his name's sake, is to make his name the means of deliverance. And so it must be, if his name itself be the all of our deliverance. By what means does he deliver? It is even by his name. By whom does Yaakov arise but by the El of Yaakov? By whom are sinners deliverance but by the name of El, by the Mashiach of El? And, quote, there is none other name given under Shemaim, whereby we must be delivered, unquote. Acts 4.12 No man comes to the Father but by him as the way, by him as the leader, as the name of El. And it mentions, Shaul says that he inherited the name above every name. Our Mashiach in the prayer in Yahukanon twice over says, Father, in your name which you have given me, right? And where he's specifically talking about that. So this is something that you can most clearly see when you look at what is called Nomnia Sacra or the sacred names in Latin. And it is the placeholders that were used in the Greek manuscripts from the the third century to the 14th century AD when the time the Nicolaitans came to power and they banned the Hebrew language when the original Greek manuscripts would have his name they just wrote it in paleo but after the time that it was banned from being used or written or spoken and they destroyed every text that they can get their hands on that had any Hebrew they would use placeholders instead of just transliterating into a different language because that wasn't possible and they used placeholders for Yahuwah, 
Yahushua, man as the word for Adam, the upright polar stake that he was impaled upon, the word Mashiach, every title that he has, Elohim, Eloah, El Shaddai, they all had placeholders for them. The word for Ruach was only a placeholder was always used when it was speaking of his Ruach. But anytime it was just using the normal, uh, it would use the normal Greek or Latin word for the name of a spirit when it was talking about another kind. So it made a distinction there, which is why I usually always say Ruach and don't say spirit when I'm reading and talking about the set apart Ruach, right? But there, that's another thing we can go over in time. However, when you look at the information in the placeholders and you actually see how they were used throughout the renewed covenant writings, he's our Mashiach is called Yahuwah, Yahushua, Mashiach all over. Every place, almost every instance where you see the master Yahushua Mashiach or in the more perverted versions of English where it says the Lord Jesus Christ, where it has that blasphemous error in place of the truth, it should say Yahuwah, Yahushua Mashiach, and you can actually see it in the placeholders. Um, even in the book of Luke, when he was being born, the messengers declared to the shepherds that in the city of Dawid, Mashiach Yahuwah was being born. And again, when he was risen, it says they came to the tomb and they did not find the body of Yahuwah Yahushua. So even in the good news accounts, he's being named and called Yahuwah. It was foretold before, it was given to him after, and he was called Yahushua in the flesh because it was hidden. It was he was it was a secret. These things were hidden from the principalities and powers, as it was mentioned, but made known to his Kodashim, even throughout all time. And again, that's something you can see when you look at the, the writings like Gad the Seer. Chapter 1 reveals to Gad, who is a foreteller, the truth of who our Mashiach is, who comes to him as the man in a linen gown with a golden band, just like it describes him in Revelation. And he says to Gad, Ehie Asher Ehie, or I am that which I am, is his name. And by his name you shall barak all the children of Yisrael. He was the one that appeared in the burning bush and called himself Yahuwah to Moshe. He's the one that appeared on the burning mountain and gave the covenant to the children. He's the one that came and died for that covenant's sake so that we can be brought into the renewed covenant because he's the one that gave it. Um, Ob willing, this will become more apparent as we go through, but there are distinctions. A lot of people have uh, they have some interesting ideas about who the father is in relation to the son and whether or not they're the same individual or other things. But when you when you read the things that were hidden, especially the missing chapters from the recognitions of Clement, in book three, there's 10 chapters that are missing that were taken out that go in detail about the identity of the father, our Mashiach, and the Kodesh Ruach and how there is no trinity, there is no co-equal unity of them, but there is a distinct difference, and they are exactly as the word in Scripture defines them. So, but a lot of people, we're still learning. So, to finish this real quick, though, it says, No man comes to the Father, but by him as the way, by him as the leader, and as the name of El. Five. To deliver for his name's sake is to make his name the measure of our deliverance. He will, therefore, deliver as far as his name and honor is engaged by promise to Mashiach or to his people in him, 1 Kings 8.56. Read also Yahushua 21.45. There failed not aught any... Er, not aught of any good thing which Yahuwah has spoken unto the house of Yisrael. All came to pass. Thus Elohim delivers his people in particular cases, as far as his name and steadfast fidelity and truth is concerned. Quote, Elohim is steadfast, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it, unquote. 1 Corinthians 10.13 6. To deliver for his name's sake is to make his name the end of our deliverance, even the esteem of his name. The great end he proposes in delivering is even the praise of the esteem of his favor, Ephesians 1.6. The praise of the esteem of his hokma, power, set-apartness, righteousness, goodness, and truth. This is the great end of Elohim in his work of delivering sinners through Mashiach. Quote, This people have I formed for myself. They will show forth my praise. Unquote. Yeshiyahu 43.21 And again, um, in the apocryphal Psalms, Esteem Yahuwah with a great voice. Make known his deeds among the, the Kodeshim, right? The assembly. That's what wisdom was given to men for, it mentions. Mashiach's grand prayer when he was accomplishing the work of our deliverance and redemption was, quote, Father, esteem your name, unquote. And here let us stay a little and admire the great design that Elohim had in hand in delivering for his name's sake. El's chief concern herein being the esteem and honor of his name. What is that? Why? 1. In delivering for his name's sake, he designs the manifestation of his name, the declaration of his name. As it is said, Romans 3.25, quote, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Elohim, unquote. To make known his name in every deliverance of Yisrael or of his assembly, his great design still is <clears throat> that his name may be known, declared, published, and proclaimed. 2. In delivering for his name's sake, he designs the vindication of his name. His name is abused and reproached in the world. And if you need any proof of that, all you have to do is go look up what a Yahoo is today, right? Which is filled with harsh thoughts of Elohim, as if he were either unrighteous or unmerciful. Therefore, in delivering for his name's sake, he will vindicate his name, quote, that he may be righteous when he speaks and clear when he judges, unquote. Psalm 2, 4 and Hanok chapters 2 through 5. That he may appear to be not only merciful in delivering, but also righteous and the declarer right of them that believe in Yahushua, and as righteous in delivering believing sinners that flee to his name, as he is righteous in damning unbelieving, impertinent sinners, impenitent sinners. 3. In delivering for his name's sake, he designs the exaltation of his name. Quote, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Unquote. Psalm 46.10 he designs that the right hand of Yahuwah should be exalted in doing valiantly, Psalm 118.16, and make mention that his name is exalted, Yeshayahu 12.4. Quote, Therefore will he be exalted, that he may have unmerited tender loving kindness on you, unquote, Yeshayahu 30.18. Wherefore has Elohim exalted Mashiach to his right hand, but that his name may be exalted in him. Quote, Who being in the form of Elohim, thought it no robbery to be equal with Elohim, or to be equal with El, that at the name or in the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow of things in Shemaim, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Unquote. Philippians 2, 6 and 10 on which account Elohim has highly exalted him to the esteem of Elohim the Father. And wherefore does he deliver and esteem and exalt any sinner through Mashiach, 
but that his name may be esteemed and exalted. For in delivering sinners for his name's sake, he designs the pleasure of his name, that his name should not only be exalted, but delighted in, because it delights in showing unmerited tender loving kindness through Mashiach. Micah 7.18 we read of the good pleasure of his will, Ephesians 1 5, the good pleasure of his tovim, or goodness, 2 Thessalonians 1 11. El being infinitely well pleased in Mashiach, he takes pleasure in giving out of his goodness through him, and he delivers to the good pleasure of his name and to the contentment of all his attributes, to the good pleasure of his goodness the good pleasure of his favor, the good pleasure of his set-apartness, the good pleasure of his right rulings, the good pleasure of his truth and steadfast fidelity. All the perfections of Elohim are well pleased. Quote, Unmerited tender loving kindness and truth are met together. Righteousness and shalom have kissed each other. Unquote. Psalm 85.10 5. In delivering sinners for his name's sake, he designs the aggrandizing of his name. I mean, that his name should not only be esteemed and exalted, but magnified to the highest, according to the song of the messengers upon the coming of the deliverer. Quote, Esteem to El in the highest, and on earth shalom, and goodwill towards men. I put, with whom he is pleased. Unquote, because that's the finishing of the quote in the book of Luke at 2.14. His name is magnified to the highest in this way of deliverance through Mashiach. Damnation is but the lowest way, wherein Elohim is esteemed himself by the instrumentality of sinners, and it is to their eternal ruin. Let sinners consider this that they may not go on in the road to hell, but may fall in love with that way, wherein El is esteemed and magnified to the highest. For herein El is esteemed by the highest man, his eternal son, in his doing and dying and rising and reigning, and mediating at his right hand, esteemed in the highest place with the highest praise, in the highest manner, and to the highest degree. 6. In delivering sinners for his name's sake, he designs the everlasting, or the everlastingness, I'm sorry, of his name. Quote, It shall be to Yahuwah for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Unquote. Yeshayahu 4.13, or 4, that is, that his name may be celebrated with hallelujahs of praise to all eternity. Quote, the esteem of Yahuwah shall endure forever. Yahuwah shall rejoice in his works, unquote. Psalm 104.31, quote, your name Yahuwah endures forever, and your memorial throughout all generations, unquote. Psalm 135.13 Mashiach, the Deliverer, was set up from everlasting, that the sinner delivered in El, or delivered of El in him, might praise him to everlasting, quote, his name shall endure forever, unquote, and his ransom shall come to Zion with everlasting songs, saying, quote, Deliverance to our Elohim that sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb, forever and ever. Unquote. Revelation 7.12 Question. What is it in the name of Elohim that he has such regard to, when he delivers for his name's sake? Answer. He has regard to his name in all the parts of it that I have already mentioned and in every attribute, insomuch that no attribute shall be injured, but every one of them extolled more than another.
and this is in answer to everyone that likes to pick and choose, well, his name is his character. Well, his name means this particular thing, or his name means that particular thing, or his name is literally the proper pronunciation of his name. It's not just one, it's everything that it's supposed to mean. And this is what Ralph Aronson King's sermon goes into great detail proving. So anyone that tries to just pigeonhole into one really does themselves a disservice in anyone that believes it. it. Says he also has regard to his name in all the properties and qualities of it. His name is a splendorous name. And in delivering sinners through Mashiach, he has regard to the esteem of it, that it be esteemed in the manner I have hinted at. His name is a great name, and in delivering sinners through Mashiach, he has regard to the greatness of it by bringing about such a great deliverance. And what will he not do for his great name? His name is a set-apart name, and therefore in delivering sinners through Mashiach, he has a regard to the set-apartness of it not only in setting apart all whom he delivers, but in delivering by a righteousness whereby his set-apart instructions is not only fulfilled, but magnified and made honorable in providing a deliverer of such infinite dignity that he casts a luster on the Torah by his obedience to it. His name is a dreadful name, and therefore in delivering sinners through Mashiach, he has such a regard to the dreadfulness of it that his most dreadful vengeance lighted upon sin in the man of the surety, the deliverer, when he became an offering for sin. His name is a precious name, and therefore in delivering sinners, he has such a regard to the manifesting the preciousness of it so as to make it appear in the precious blood of Mashiach, which is the price of deliverance. His name is a Baruch name, and he cannot be more Baruch and happy than he is in himself. Yet, to manifest the Baraka of his name, he delivers sinners, so as to show he loves not to be Baruch and Ashrei, or happy alone, but will have men to be Baruch in him, that all nations may call him Baruch, or blessed, right? His name is a wonderful name, a mysterious and unsearchable name, and therefore it is said, Yeshayahu 9.6, quote, His name shall be called Wonderful, unquote. Messenger, and one of the titles for our Mashiach is Palmoni the wonderful numberer, right? That was in Daniel 7. Messengers have been prying into this depth so many thousands of years, and yet are not at the bottom of it, but still are prying into the mystery of the good news, deliverance through Mashiach. And such is the regard Elohim has to this wonderful name in delivering sinners, that every part of their deliverance is a miracle and wonder, manifesting the chokmah of El in a mystery. In a word, his name is an everlasting and unchangeable name, and it is his regard thereunto that makes him by means or by the means of his everlasting righteousness to bring or bring about this everlasting deliverance. Sorry about that. And I think that's a good place for us to stop for today. We'll be able to continue this next time. You all have a wonderful Shabbat and a Shavuot Tov, a pleasant week ahead. We will see you next time.